What's going on YouTube? So today I'm here with a very special video, kind of one of my first installments of this anime thing that I've been trying to integrate on my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing some of the things about the new upcoming Volume 4 of Ruby. So for those of you who don't know, Ruby is an animation produced by Rooster Teeth, which is a production company based in Austin, Texas. One of their first productions, full-fledged productions, was Red vs. Blue. Some of y'all might have heard of that. I believe Red vs. Blue has been going for a few seasons now, actually like 14 or 15, I believe it's on its final volume. So Rooster Teeth is making Volume 4 of Ruby. It's releasing October 22nd for first members, I believe. I'm not myself currently a first member, but I might become a first member so that I can be able to see these Ruby episodes the day that they release officially. So this is the point of the video where I effectively explain Ruby very, very poorly. So what I'm going to do is throw some fight videos up on the screen. So I ask that you guys kind of halfway listen to me as you watch those. All right, let's get on with the video. So basically, it's about a kind of apocalyptic world where um, these students, boys and girls, go to train at an academy to become huntresses and hunters that fight these grim, as they're called, these grim creatures. I'll throw a picture up of those. They fight the grim creatures. Um, that nobody really knows where the grim came from. That is just one of their missions as a hunter or huntresses, is to fight the grim and keep humanity alive. I've been watching Ruby since volume two and I've been loving it ever since. And so that is kind of one of the things that inspired me to make this video, is just my love for this series. I think it's a great series. I think there's nothing else like it today that's coming out in America and I really want to see where it continues to go. And now I'm going to tell you what the current situation is as of the last volume of Ruby. I don't know why I didn't say this in the video, but I'm telling you here. Dang it, Anna Nerf. So basically, the Ruby team is deformed, and now there is a new team called Team Ranger, which is made up of Ruby, Nora, Jean, and Ren. Um, I believe Ruby is the leader. So that's going to be one of the main plot points of Volume 4. Now the real thing I wanted to talk about which everyone seems to be talking about. I wanted to put, 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 And I wanted to put my few cents in on it as well. I wanted to look at the members of Team Ruby and their new costume designs that they have made for Volume 4 because I think these costumes are very relevant to what is going to be coming up in this volume. So first of all, we have Ruby. Um, one of the first things I think about when I see Ruby is that she looks very grown up. I think she's really stepping into her role as a leader. I think she's a lot more battle-hardened than the Ruby we saw in volume one whenever Ozpin pulled her aside and asked if she wanted to join the Academy. Um, I also think she probably has developed her ability that she unlocked last volume. I can't really disclose what that is for people who haven't seen the series, but I really hope that they really take that further in this volume. Now one of the most interesting characters I'd have to say for this volume is Weiss. Uh, if you notice, she looks a lot more like uh, elegant and graceful than she did in some of the earlier volumes, but I think one of the things about Weiss is that she's always been a rebel from the beginning of Volume 1. She's always wanted to make her own way and do things her own way. Like one of the very blatant examples of that is her having her bun a little bit off to the side uh, from the very beginning. But now as you see from this photo, um, she looks very elegant, very graceful. Kind of like uh, she has been reined in to what her family expects of her, at least her father. At the end of the last volume, due to uh, difficult circumstances, I'll say, um, her father took her back to Atlas, which is the one of the countries basically that makes up Remnant. That's the bigger, the biggest country that makes up the Remnant world. If I didn't mention already, the Ruby world is called Remnant. I don't, we don't know why it's called Remnant, but that'll probably be, be explained in one of the later volumes. Yeah. Anyway, I was saying Weiss has been reined in. She has kind of been taken under the wing of her family, and I feel like she's being less of a rebel than she was. Um, I think we're all gonna be kind of sad to see this at the beginning, at least if that is what transpires, if this is what, uh, if what I'm seeing is what is actually going to happen. I think she's going to see all these things happening around her in this volume, and she's going to come back into herself and become the Weiss that we've grown to love from the previous volumes. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about was Blake. I think she looks freaking awesome. That's actually probably one of my, one of, if not my favorite new character design. She just looks so rogue and she's, she's seen a lot of stuff. Outfit kind of looks like the costumes from volume one and the second volume um, combined kind of. I thought it was very interesting. I just think that Blake is going to be just going on her own mission and doing her own thing for this volume, for most of it anyway, um, because she's seen a lot of stuff happen 
in the previous volume and she's really looking for some revenge. And she's looking to change the future. She's looking to eliminate this threat that has always been in her life and is making things worse for the future. So I think we're not gonna see a ton of Blake in volume four. She'll be interacting with the main story in little ways, but not as the main plot. It'll be really interesting to see what she does when she goes after the White Fang and Adam and all of that. That will be a really interesting part of this volume, I feel. Now, I think the character design for Yang in this volume is very, very special and very particular because in the last volume, she something kind of happened to her that was physically debilitating. I can't really say that much, but you might be able to figure it out from this picture. But as we saw in the last volume, she wasn't doing so hot. Um, but this, this art that I'm seeing here, it looks so good. It's like she's come back bigger than ever, better than ever, um, and yet... Even with her handicap, she's just better than ever and she's going to be stronger than ever. I feel like Yang's gonna find a way to overcome this disability because she has, she's always had that fire in her soul to do what's right and fight for the good of Team Ruby when it was originally formed. I feel like she's actually gonna have a bigger spotlight in this because one of the things I was hoping for for this volume was a little bit less action, a little bit more uh, plot, as you will, and um, just getting to develop the characters as this time skip has happened. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but there's a bit of a time skip from Volume 3 and Volume 4. Um, it's about a year, a little bit more, maybe. Yang is stepping back into it, and she's really going to be great. I feel like she's going to be a very important character in this upcoming volume. Um, some things I have to say about the animation of this one, it's a lot different from the original. Um, they're using a different program to make it, but it looks so good. Um, I love all the character designs. I love the, the way they made the environments look. I love the way they've done the effects with the fire. I just love everything about it. Um, the new Grim look awesome, I have to say. Um, there's a picture of one of the big ones from the trailer, but there's the big uh, character design for that big ape Grim. I think that's so cool. I'm just, I'm just so, so happy with everything that this volume is doing. Ruby is becoming such a big thing, um, but I believe Rooster Teeth is still continuing to deliver, and I think it's great. Now, I have a lot of crazy theories for this volume, but I don't think I really have the time to share them with you today. Just know that I have been very, very busy in trying to balance school and try and still make videos, because literally, after I finish this video, I gotta pack up and go back to college. Um, and get back on that grind, you feel. Applause for anyone who does college and still does YouTube actively. You're the real MVPs. So I really wanted to make this video. I'm really glad that I got to film this video. I'm really, I'm on a tight time schedule at this moment, but I'm really glad that I was able to make this video because this is a series that I really am passionate about. It's my favorite American or Japanese anime, whatever you want to call it, that's being currently produced right now. It really is a great show and I really encourage you guys to check it out. Um, I really recommend you don't jump in at volume four. Please Please, please do not do that if you're going to go all the way back to volume one because all of the stuff that's in volume one is still relevant to volume four. You can't just jump in at any time you like. But it's a great story and I promise you'll enjoy it. I hope this video was a nerf for you and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye guys!